the TDD will give you the earliest date the tax is dischargeable. It will provide the alternative answers with respect to tolling of the two-year rule, warns you about McCoy, SFRs, etc. You go to your best case program, and this is what you look for. You look for tools, and then you drop down to the discharge determinator, and then you register. And then you come to the registration page. You put in your first name, your username, and your email. Make sure the email is accurate. And then you submit it. So you'll get a confirming email. And then when you're ready to go, go directly to TDD or through best case. This is what the, soft, the program looks like. I strongly recommend you read about frequently asked questions getting started because that will tell you everything you need to know, and it's so easy. So what you do, and I'm going to show this is an actual malpractice case. This is what account transmit looks like, except it's not highlighted in yellow. So you go in here after you've registered. You go back and you sign in, and this is the dashboard. This is what you see, and it's got completed sessions. I can view them if I want to go back and look at it. It's got uh, started sessions, as I'm going to demonstrate. When you go through it, if you need to stop at any time, you hit save and exit, and you can come back here. So this gives you, you can search for past sessions, etc. So I want to get started. I'm going to use a session. The first thing you do is you've got to give it a name so you can find it. We use the people's last name. So I'm going to call this webinar um, 8-21-15. You, you know, we, we call it Johnson, Bob 2006. In fact, this one we're going to do is 2005. So I'm going to call it uh, 2005. Because uh, Mr. Johnson or Mr. Webinar might have five or six years to analyze, and you want to be able to keep each year separate. So you just do that and go next. Okay, what tax year is it? You can either write in it, or you can go like this. You go down. It's it's 2005. So right here, this is the transcript, and it's got the response date. You see, I pulled this several years ago. It's for 2005. So I hit next. Is it an income tax? Yes. All right. What's the return date? It tells you here near the bottom of the first page. Find the line return due date or return received date, whichever is later. Find that line. All right, well, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of that page, and I've highlighted here to make it easier. Okay, you go back here. Do not use the date that corresponds to processing date. So don't use this date. They're different. Use that date, July 2107. So I'll go July 7, 21, 2007. Next. Enter the code 150 line. All right, well, I'm going to go down here to code 150. There it is right there. And it's a positive dollar amount. That's what you're looking for. Here's the date, 9-10-07. So you just push 9-10-2007. What's the dollar amount? 42-870, 42-870. Next. Was there an extension filed? Let's see, this is an example. You don't need, well, this goes to the three-year rule. You don't need to know anything. You just look for a code 460. Uh, yep, there's a code 460. And it extended it to October 15. It was filed 413. So it says, when was that code 460 filed? It was 413-2006, I believe, right? 2006. And it was extended to 10-15-2006. Next, was there a civil fraud, Code 320? I know there wasn't on this case. Was your, did your client get convicted of criminal tax fraud? No. But was there an additional assessment? Look for code, code 290 or any of these other ones with a positive dollar amount. Okay, well, let's scroll down. Now, I happen to know that down here there's this code 290, but there's no, dollar, no you know, positive dollar amount. Well, if it were $20 or 100 bucks, you don't care about it. You want a, a big one. So you're looking, is there any code 290? No, there's not. No additional settlement. That's for the 520 or the 240-day uh, rule. All right, look for a code 520. There's 971s. What about that? It doesn't ask you for 971. Just answer the questions. We try to make this easy as can be. There's no code 520. And you see here, save and exit. I can hit that, and it will save it, and I can come back later. If the power goes out, it will save it. All right, so there's no code 520. Is there an offer and compromise? Remember, an offer and compromise is one of those things that can toll. So I'm looking. There's no 480. 
Here's the summary. Let me explain how you use it. When you register to use it, you get two free trials. After that, you buy sessions as you, you know, pay as you go. You need one session for every tax year. The cheapest way to do it, what almost everybody does, is they buy 10 sessions at a time, which is uh, 297 bucks, so less than $30 a piece. As you can see, it's taking me two minutes, and I'm going to be done in a second. Up to this point, I have not used up any of my sessions. I can hit save and exit and come back, whatever. Once I hit submit, then it uses a session. So it's very important because once you hit submit, you can't call me and say, oh, I made a mistake. You know, can I get another one? No. So you look here. you got to make sure it's 2005. You confirm all that information. Then you hit submit. Okay, now this page gives you the answer. You see at the top it's got the client's name and the year and the tax tool answer. The client can file bankruptcy on or after October 19, 2009. We call that the magic date. If you wait until that date, it will be dischargeable in 7 or 13. It also gives you the date that each of the three main tests are satisfied. Why is that important? Because if you don't wait until the magic date and you file Chapter 13 down here, it will tell you how to treat it in Chapter 13 depending on which of these tests are met when you do file the Chapter 13. So I'm just going to save and exit there. Now, what was that date? It was October 19. Now, the reason I've got this line here is this is an actual malpractice case. This person filed bankruptcy October, I mean, what is that, August 14, two months too early. Had this transcript been pulled and the analysis done here before August 14, it would have told the bankruptcy attorney, wait until October. The reason it appears here is because I pulled this transcript after. If you look, it says I pulled it back in, in 2010, um, you know, a year after they filed bankruptcy, okay? So the line indicates that's where the transcript would have stopped uh, if they were pulled prior to the bankruptcy, and it would have told him to wait a couple of months. He didn't wait. As a result, there's just about $70,000 that did not get discharged. And a malpractice claim was filed. Uh, one letter, two brief telephone calls with the insurance company, and they offered a $50,000 settlement, which the client accepted. So, but for using a $30 program, which you see it took two or three minutes, he wouldn't have been sued for $70,000.